right, welcome to this episode of The Daily. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, the other night I had the chance, well, actually not the other night, the other week, over a series of three consecutive nights, I had the chance to watch all three of the Hobbit films back to back. Now, when I, was, when I first went and saw these films in the cinema, I did not enjoy the experience. I found it to be really frustrating and I just didn't enjoy them. They, were, they weren't up to the same standard as the Lord of the Rings movies and I don't think they were crafted as well. Now, watching the films, though, over three consecutive nights, I've actually changed my view a little bit, and it was actually quite an enjoyable experience, and I really enjoyed the story, and I understood by watching them over three consecutive nights, much closer together, what they were actually trying to do, and it made a lot of sense to me. Um, the original films were broken apart over a three-year period, so there was a year between each instalment. And because there were so many moving parts, and because they've wandered so far from the source material and added in all these other factors, plus there's also the Lord of the Rings the original trilogy sort of floating around in the back of your mind and you're sort of trying to figure out where things tie in, it actually meant that us, you know, poor movie-going plebs, we sort of lost track of what was happening in those films. And by the time you got to each instalment, you couldn't remember what had happened in the previous one. And it just completely undermined the experience of the film. But watching them over three consecutive nights, the story made a lot more sense and it was a lot more coherent. Now, it's not perfect because there are definitely things that I don't think were as good as the original Lord of the Rings uh, movie. So, for example, uh, the relationship between uh, Evangeline Lilly's Hobbit... Uh, um, sorry, elf character, um, who was invented for the films, uh, and uh, one of the dwarfs, there's a romance between them, but it's forced, and it just doesn't work because it's not part of the original story, and they try and create a very sort of passionate romance between two characters where it really doesn't apply and it doesn't belong, and they don't build up any sort of friendship between the characters first, it just, we're just sort of thrown into it, and then it goes to this very intense sort of level, and as a result, it, it just doesn't work, and it comes across as very cheesy. There is also, in each film, there's probably at least two scenes in each film where the CGI uh, was not really uh, given, I think, proper care and attention, and that's frustrating because there's also some amazing CGI in these films, like uh, I think of Smile the Dragon, absolutely amazing, the attention to detail there, but then in other scenes, <clears throat> not so much, and I think part of that was because they'd strayed so far from the source material and telling the story that there was nothing really sort of keeping them faithful to anything, whereas in the original trilogy, I think, I imagine that if they'd been tempted to get out of hand with some of the CGI, Peter Jackson would have just pulled them back in and said, OK, let's get back on track. We're here to serve the story. Let's be faithful to the original source material. Well, because they strayed so far from the source material this time, they really almost had a template to sort of go carte blanche and just sort of make stuff up. And it shows a little bit some of that CGI where I don't think they've paid as much attention as they could have. But overall, by watching the films back to back, it's a far more enjoyable experience. And I encourage you, if you haven't done it, and perhaps if you're critical of the films like I was when they came out at the cinema, Go and watch them over a series of consecutive nights or very close together, and I think you'll get a, a much greater appreciation for what they were trying to do, even if they did break up the second and the third movie in the totally the wrong place. Smaug should have attacked Lake Town uh, as, at the end of the second movie, not at the beginning of the first. It was sort of just this pointless add-on by, by dragging it into the third movie. But other than that, it's a pretty good set of films that tells a, a pretty engaging tale when you watch it. Uh, uh, back to back like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily. <laughs>